Hey, what's up everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about the five hiding places, the five places that mortgage professionals hide where they play safe and they coddle their comfort zones and they retract into comfort zone land that keeps them from their greatness, that keeps them from their highest potential. Now, you might be thinking, Dorn, really? Do mortgage professionals really hide? Do mortgage professionals really have hiding places where they play safe? And the answer is emphatically, hell freaking yeah. Welcome to being human. This is not a mortgage professional thing. This is a human thing. And so if you notice, if you're really honest with yourself, that you have a proclivity towards taking the path of least resistance and doing what's comfortable and convenient versus what's hard and what's risky, welcome to being human. Welcome to being on the front lines of real life and welcome to the club. We're all in the same boat. What happens though is if we let that current of average, as I call it, pull us into our complacency, our neglect, to pull us into being in our comfort zone, what happens is when we're comfortable, we tend to breed stagnation and what stagnates tends to rot. So we don't want to just let that current of average pull us down current, down the precipice of mediocrity because that is obviously not what you are committed to, nor is it what you're called to, nor is it why you're in this business. You didn't get in this business to be average. You know it and I know it. So let's talk about this, shall we? Let's shine a light on these five hiding places that unfortunately 80% plus, if not even a higher percentage than that of mortgage professionals allow to have them live a mediocre life in the muck and, medio me the muck and mire of mediocrity. Easy for me to say. It's a word I don't like. I detest so much. I have a hard time saying it apparently, but it keeps them in the muck and mire of mediocrity, and it keeps them settling for second best. Because the truth is that 80% of people who get in this business get chewed up and spat out in just two years. Those who manage to survive their first two years only make 75K. And that's before tax, not after tax. Now, I don't know anyone who got into this business who has an ounce of ambition, who was inspired to get in this business to make 75K gross, 45K net. Chances are you're no exception. So how is it that so many people settle for second best? How is it so many people spin their wheels, bang their head, head against the wall and go nowhere in this business and just settle for a second best life in I can't afford it prison? Well, here is how it happens. It's called the five hiding places. So let's get into it and do it, shall we? The first hiding place is this. Paperwork, paperwork. Now you, be, you might be thinking, Dorn, are you kidding me? Paperwork is a hiding place? I hate paperwork. How would that be a hiding place? And the reason why it's a hiding place is because in order to push the needle on profit and performance in your business at the highest level, you need to focus on rainmaking, not paper pushing. And most mortgage professionals, with rare exception, emotionally associate, notice that word, I use the word intentional, emotional, emotionally associate more risk with picking up the phone and booking appointments with realtors than they do pushing paper around their desk and doing administration. So from an emotional standpoint, not from a logical standpoint, they associate more resistance, more pain, more fear around making outbound calls to push the needle on growing their business by booking appointments with top producing agents, for example, than they do to push paper across their desk. So that becomes a hiding place where they tend to unconsciously, gravitationally pull themselves towards what's comfortable, what's convenient, what seems less risky in the moment. Have you noticed? So that is one of the hiding places. If we allow ourselves to let the current of average tow us towards the precipice of mediocrity, we will automatically have a bent, a gravitational pull towards that. So we literally have to swim upstream against this current of average. 
We have to resist the urge to do what's comfortable and convenient. And we need to delegate more and more of the paper pushing so that we have more energy, more fuel in our tank and more time to focus on what really makes a difference when it comes to filling the pipeline and growing your business. And that is and always will be attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive. Now, that being said, a lot of times, the reason why you're not wanting to reach out to realtors is because you don't have a kick-ass value proposition that's unique and compelling, and you're showing up as just an unwanted pest instead of an annoying pest instead of a welcome guest. If you can relate to those two things, then chances are you have natural resistance to reaching out to realtors because you don't want to be that lone leech who's just pounding down their door and you're just another average Joe LO saying you got great rates, great service, throw me a bone. Because again, naturally that degrades your sense of dignity, right? You naturally feel like you're groveling, you're chasing, you're begging, you're bribing. You're hoping they're going to throw you a bone or throw a, let a crumb fall off the table and give you one of their last resort loans, right? You don't want to be the last resort loan officer. So if you notice you have hesitation or reluctance to making calls to realtors, chances are it's because you don't have a kick-ass unique value proposition that flips the script so that the realtor needs you more than you need them. If that's the case, you really do indeed need our help. And that's a big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage professionals hire us because it is not an easy code to crack to figure out how to flip that script. It's not an easy code to crack to figure out how to bring a kick-ass value proposition such that the realtor needs you more than you need them. If it was, we wouldn't be in business bringing in seven figures a year consistently helping mortgage pros create breakthroughs for 16 years. We wouldn't be in business for 16 years if that was an easy code to crack. If you could just do a little online research, you know, just do a little research on Google, bada bing, bada boom. You can watch a free YouTube video. You can read a free blog. You can listen to a free podcast and easy breezy lemon squeezy. You crack that code and now you're moving on to making your millions in the mortgage business. Obviously, that's not the case. If it was, everyone would be fit, rich, and happy in this business. Most people are fat, broken, unhappy in this business. Why is it? Because this is not an easy code to crack. So keep in mind, if you have a proclivity towards procrastination of pushing the needle with proactive prospecting and you have a bent towards paperwork as a hiding place, you are not alone. It's because you need to upgrade your strategy on how to do proactive prospecting in a way where you hold the cookie. You're in the driver's seat where you are in a power position and you get to pick and choose who you want to work with instead of groveling and chasing and begging and bribing. That's doing it the hard way. Okay, so that's the first hiding place that chances are many of you are falling prey, falling prey to, which is paperwork. Let's get into the second one. The second one is social media. Really, Doran? Isn't social media the main thing I should be focusing on right now? Isn't that the main thing that I should be focusing on to grow my business? How could that possibly be a hiding place? But there's a big difference between activity and productivity, you may have noticed. And if you look back at how many hours you've spent, how many countless hours you've spent doing, quote, unquote, social media marketing, how's that, as Dr. Phil would say, how's that working for you so far? Is it actually working? Are you tracking the results from it? Are you getting a handsome return on investment? Chances are, if you're like most mortgage professionals, you're spending a lot of time, energy, perhaps money, but you're not getting a whole lot of juice from the fruit because frankly, social media marketing, most of that should be delegated to a virtual assistant. Most of that is just minutia. You can delegate for five bucks an hour. But Doran, are you telling me I can get a $5 hour per hour virtual assistant to do videos? No, that you need to do yourself. But frankly, all you need to do is maybe spend... 15 to 30 minutes, maximum an hour a week doing videos. It shouldn't take that long if you are working smart versus working hard. What about the other you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 plus hours a week you're spending in the minutia of social media that's just got you chasing your tail, splashing around in the ocean, but not really getting anywhere? Again, that's a hiding place. And it's a hiding place because it feels a lot more comfortable 
and a lot less risky to be behind your computer screen with your keyboard being a keyboard warrior, if you will, versus getting out there and taking a risk by reaching out to these top producing realtors to book appointments. But truth be told, you're going to have 10 times, 100 times, perhaps even more of a multiple return on investment getting in front of top producing agents with the right strategy, with the right hook, with the right value proposition than you will ever get by doing a bunch of posts on social media where you get a few likes and that's it. You might get a few comments and that's it. It's not really making your phone ring, right? With rare exception, most of those posts are doing jack diddly squat for you, true or not true. So it's a hiding place because you feel productive, but it's not productive. It's activity, not productivity. And delusional optimism is what keeps you doing it. Everyone else is doing it. I need to do it. Everyone else is doing it. This is just what I need to do. It's the follow the herd mentality. The truth is the, the herd is heading towards the precipice and is about to fall off the edge. You don't want to be one of them. The truth is the herd is mediocre. You don't want to be one of them. So if everyone else is zigging, you want to be zagging. That means do what is most rewarding. And usually what's most rewarding is also most risky. On the other side of risk is reward. Again, what does that challenge you to do? To swim upstream against the current of average, to do what is going to help you conquer, not what's going to be most comfortable. You with me on that? So that's the second hiding place is social media. Let's check out the third one. Hiding place number three, buying leads. Now you might be thinking, Dorn, are you kidding me? Buying leads is a hiding place? That's a shit ton of work. I'm calling these guys. They're not answering the phone. I'm grinding. I'm white knuckling. I'm texting. I'm emailing. I'm calling them multiple times. I'm leaving voicemail multiple times. How could that possibly be a hiding place? It's a hiding place because you feel like you're moving forward because you're buying the leads either by pay-per-click on Facebook or whatever, or you're buying it from a lead company and you get this gratification of look at all these contacts on a list, right? So you get this false sense of hope or delusional optimism, as I call it, where you just start seeing dollar signs, right? Especially if you're new. If this is the first time you've ever done it and you haven't got your nuts kicked in or ovaries kicked in with the waste of time and the fruitless toil that this, you know, this so-called list of leads is, uh, you know, in your mind, a significant opportunity. If you've never done it, it feels like a big opportunity. Wow. Look at all these contacts. Wow. I'm going to, I'm going to get rich. But then what you find is as you start to make these calls, you realize this is not an easy code to crack. You're wasting your time calling people over and over again. They don't want to hear from you. They've forgotten even what they did to get on your list. They don't want to give you the time of day. Those who do are shopping you. They're rate shoppers. They're looky loos. Uh, they're not qualified. They're living in a freaking trailer or living in their mama's basement. They don't have a down payment. They got a credit score at 480, right? And it's like, you know, you know, you're trying to do miracle work. You're not in the mortgage business anymore. Now you're in the loan resurrection business, trying to resurrect dead loans that are just not going to fly. You try and strap wings on it with duct tape, but it just ain't going anywhere. Meanwhile, you're spending countless hours and countless amounts of you know time, energy, and money on this thing. And sure, you might get a loan closed out of one out of, one out of every 70 to 100 leads. But if you think about how much time you're wasting, if you think about your earnings per hour, if you think about your profit at the end of the day after spending all the money on the leads, your profit per loan is probably at least less than half of what it would have been if it had come through a referral source like a realtor or a client. And so now you're spending all this time, but you're literally working longer and harder for less. And now you're on a guinea pig wheel. You're not actually in a real business. Now you're a freaking call center calling a bunch of crap leads that don't want to hear from you. And when you get a lead, they're most likely to shop you, which means now they're going for the lowest rate and you're whittling down your price points, or if you can, you're buying down your price points. And now you're trying to win the deal based on price. And if you're winning the war by price, you're also going to die the war by price. And now you're a replaceable cog in the wheel. There's no unique value proposition that they're seeing in what you're bringing to the table. They're not pre-sold. They're not pre-cooked. They're not pre-tenderized. It's a hard 
long grind up the mountain, literally sifting through a mountain of gravel just to find a few gold nuggets. That's doing it the hard way. How is that a hiding place? It's a hiding place because it gives you this delusional sense, this false security that you're being productive, but it's not being productive. It's activity. It's not productivity. And so again, that's a hiding place because it keeps you distracted from what really pushes the needle on profit and performance in your business at the highest level, which again is and always will be, if you have a database, mining the gold from your database, maximizing repeat and referral business from your happy clients. And if you don't have a database, it's just one thing, attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive. There is nothing that even gets remotely close to being as profitable as that. And if you've been in this business for more than a day, you know that to be true. And yet we chase these bright, shiny objects, these quote unquote silver bullets, right? These quote unquote easy buttons. And we become victims of these bullshit offers, chasing these bright, shiny objects, going nowhere, chasing our tail. That's a hiding place. And the earlier you realize that, the earlier you're going to get back on track to get onto the path of prosperity, the path of promise. So that's the third hiding place. Let's get on to the fourth. The fourth hiding place is perfectionism. Perfectionism. Now, you, you might be thinking, well, Doran, how could perfectionism being be a hiding place? I thought perfectionism was, you know, a badge of honor. I'm a perfectionist, Right. We wear it like a badge of honor, honor. I'm a perfectionist. I want everything to be perfect. And we kind of beat our chest like that's a good thing that we're proud of. In truth, that's a hiding place. Why? Because perfectionism, perfectionism, notice it's a, a ism is a belief system. It's a belief in something. Just like people have a belief when you're young, when you're a kid, if you're raised in a household that, you know, cultivated this, we believed in Santa Claus. We believed in the tooth fairy. We believed in the Easter bunny. But that doesn't mean it's truth. It's just an ism. It's a belief, but it doesn't mean it's truth. So perfectionism is a belief that perfection is attainable. And that's about as real as believing in Santa Claus. Perfectionism is a belief in something that does not exist. The only thing that's Perfect is God. Everything else falls way short. And if you're trying to attain something that does not exist, you actually have the lowest standard. Perfectionism is the lowest standard. Going for being perfect is the lowest standard. Why? Because perfect does not exist. This side of heaven, it does not exist. And so when you're trying to strive for perfection, it actually becomes a hiding place because what happens is you tell yourself a story like I need to polish the script a little more. I need to prepare a little more. I need a little more knowledge. I need a little more skill. And so you're stuck in the parking lot with the emergency brake on, stuck in first gear, half throttle, just idling because you're trying to just get everything perfect. That's a great place to hide because it gives you a sense that you're preparing. It gives you a sense that you're going after this perfection utopia but in truth, it's a hiding place to keep yourself safe. And I've been there too, where it's like, I'm just trying to polish and prepare instead of going out there and actually getting in the battle. I'm just preparing for the battle. And the surest way to lose the battle is be in perennial preparation, going nowhere while you're getting freaking bludgeoned by virtue of not getting in the game. So my mantra that I invite you to take hold of for yourself is we seek progress, not perfection. We seek progress, not perfection, because winners take imperfect action. They just get out there and they take action while losers are still polishing up their perfect plans, just trying to get it all just right. Everything just nice and polished and beautiful and perfect while they're going nowhere, going freaking broke. That's a great way to go broke in this business, going for perfectionism. So we want to take action. And as you take action, you're going to get new distinctions. There is no such thing as failure, just feedback. So don't be worried about failure. Failure is not a person. Failure is an outcome. And it's not actually a permanent um, outcome. It's a temporary outcome where you get feedback. It's a portal of new discovery to discover 
what didn't work and what did work so you can start again more intelligently, so you can fail forward. There is no such thing as failure, just feedback, so you can start again more intelligently. Isn't that a beautiful paradigm to live into? Isn't that a beautiful, expansive perspective to step into? Or you don't have to fail. You don't have to worry about failure anymore. You don't have to fear failure. I used to fear failure. I used to worry about, can I do this? Am I good enough? Do I have what it takes? Do I have the right looks? Can I speak good enough? Do I have the knowledge that I need? And I would fear failure because I was afraid of making mistakes. And then I realized, actually, the biggest failure is not taking action. The biggest failure is playing safe. The biggest failure is hiding behind perfectionism and trying not to ever make a mistake. If I try to never make a mistake, I'm going nowhere because I'm afraid of taking action because every action is a potential failure. And so what that does is it actually puts me in a prison of my own making, a prison of perfectionism. Don't let that be you. And last but not least, the fifth hiding place that so many mortgage professionals fall prey to that cause them to play safe, play small, and fall way short of their potential and have them fall way short of the greatness that they're called to and capable of is imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. What do I mean by that? Imposter syndrome is a very human thing. It's a very human thing. And it's the human tendency to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, I'm not enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not intelligent enough. I don't have the right color of skin. I don't have the right gender. I didn't come from the right parents. I didn't come from the right side of the tracks. I didn't come from the right part of town. I didn't come from the right state. I don't come from the right company. Whatever it is, we tend to have, or I'm not knowledgeable enough, or I'm too new. I don't know enough. Can you relate? I know I certainly can. I remember starting out as a coach. One of my biggest fears is I'm, I'm not knowledgeable enough. You know, I looked like I was you know, still wet behind the ears, this young punk, who is this Doran Aldana guy? You know, I had this fear that people, if they really knew who I was, that they'd realize that I'm an imposter and they wouldn't want to work with me because I don't know enough. And you can imagine how empowering that belief was, right? Not very empowering. And we have so many reasons if we allow ourselves to, to whittle down our confidence and to knock out at the knees of our mojo and our swagger factor factor and our and our confidence and our competence because there's always something that we can look at and compare ourselves with others compare and despair and feel not enough but the truth is god didn't make any junk he didn't start with you you were made by greatness and for greatness and The truth is that this imposter syndrome is just another hiding place to play safe, to play small, to coddle our comfort zones. You might be thinking, well, Doran, that fear and that anxiety and that worry that comes from imposter syndrome is not comfortable. It's not a comfortable place to hide. That's true. But in many cases, it feels more comfortable in the moment than taking risks and being bold and swinging for the fences and having faith and going after our dreams with abandon, all in. And so this is in comparison to being bold and being audacious and going after our dreams with abandon, with faith and with heart and with courage. This is uh, in comparison, a hiding place because it's a place where we can start to tell ourselves a story that I need to get more education. I need to get more better prepared before I take some more apps or I need to learn more, or I need to do more. And there's always that prerequisite that has us really swinging for the fences, that keeps us from swinging from the fences rather. And so what happens is we we just always put that one more thing on the checklist that needs to be done to rectify what we feel is inadequate in ourselves or our situation before we go full throttle. We got the brakes on. And as you probably noticed, it's pretty hard to get a 747 off the runway if you're constantly pressing on the brakes, right? To get the 747 off the runway, we need to go full throttle, in it to win it, all in. And anytime you're pressing on the brakes with I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, and you get into that mode, you're putting on the brakes. 
And you're never going to get the 747 off the runway if you do that, are you? You're going to constantly stay grounded on the tarmac. If you want to get off the runway and into the jet stream and into your dream, you need to go full throttle, which means stepping into your champion self, your winner self, to believe in yourself. The most important sale you can ever make is yourself, to believe that God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with you to believe that you were fearfully and wonderfully made knit in your mother's womb for a special plan and a special purpose to own the fact that if you're living, if you're alive, if you're breathing, that God's got a purpose for your life and to own the fact that you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to pretend to be perfect. You just need to be you. All God and the world is asking you to be is to be you authentically you. And then to step into your champion self and to feel the fear and do it anyways, because you're more committed to your dream than you are your comfort zone. So you feel the fear, you do it anyways. You feel the resistance, you do it anyways. You feel the current of average pulling you into the story that you're not enough. And then you switch it around and you say, no, 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 not on my watch. I'm not going to believe that story anymore because I know that story is taking me towards disaster. It's taking me towards settling for second best life and mediocrity. Screw freaking that. I'm owning the truth that if that dream is in my heart, it's for a reason because it's calling me to walk by faith, to abide in faith, to be a light warrior in the darkness, to be on mission, to be on purpose with purpose, to make a difference in people's lives, to feel the fear, to do it anyways, to Continue to walk by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, which means you you see your vision, your glorious vision for your dream, and you start giving thanks for it in advance. And you start to own the fact it's already yours. You start to revel in the glory of your dream as if you already have it. And you start to build an identity that it's already yours. It's like you're an Amazon prime member you just placed your prime order and it's already yours it's got your name it is on it it's on route and you know that it's yours such that you start celebrating in advance you tell your friends and family about it in advance you're reveling in it in advance that's how you break free from the imposter syndrome prison and you step into greatness. That's how you step into your superpower. That's how you step into your champion self and you start creating a champion life because you're no longer willing to eat from the bread of not enoughness. You realize that's throwing mud in God's face. It's throwing mud in your maker's face. And you're not about to do that because you're a person of faith. You're a person who realizes that there's a reason why you're walking this earth. And it's not just to exist and take up space. It's to actually fulfill a purpose, a God calling, a God purpose, a divine destiny, much more than just doing some transactions in the mortgage business. You with me on that? That's what it takes to start to step into your greatness and to fulfill your calling and to fulfill your God destiny. So that being said, if you're listening to this right now, you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down, man. I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that energy. I know that I'm capable of so much more. I know that these are places I've been hiding. I've been hiding behind paperwork. I've been hiding behind being you know, busy, but not necessarily being productive. I realize there's a big difference between activity and productivity. I've been hiding behind social media, behind the computer screen, because it's more comfortable than being bold and, you know, swinging for the fences, getting in front of these realtors. I've been hiding behind buying these crap leads that don't convert. Never again. I've been hiding behind perfectionism, right? Trying to seek perfection. Screw freaking that. From now on, I seek progress, not perfection. I've been hiding behind the story that I'm not enough. I realize that's a lie. And I realize that lie is just leading me towards mediocrity. I know I'm called by greatness for greatness. So I impeach that lie from the garden of my mind. I embrace the truth. I embrace the truth that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, that I have a high and glorious calling. And I embrace the truth that as I surrender, as I surrender to my calling, as I surrender to my divine guidance in my life, that I will find the power of serenity and strength to fulfill my calling. And so if that's you, you're on 100% commission, you eat what you kill with no safety net. And you realize that you are just scratching the surface of the surface of your potential. And you're ready to take not just a little incremental improvement breakthrough in your business, but a quantum leap breakthrough in your business. And you're ready to start making more money in one month you used to make 
in three, four, five, six months, because the best way to help the poor is not be one of them. If you're going to work, you might as well get freaking rich. If that's your truth and that resonates with you and you're ready to learn how to work smart instead of just working hard, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where you'll get on the phone with me or one of my consultants. We'll lift up the hood on your business. We'll look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now in your business, where do you want to take it? And if we can help you bridge that gap, we'll show you what that looks like. If we can't, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. But you just need the right support, the right structure, the right guidance, the right systems. And you know that to be true. And you're sick and tired of spinning your wheels in the same spot. And you're ready to create a breakthrough now, not someday. If that's you, book a call. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys, that's all we got for today. I trust you got some insight and some distinctions and some newfound awareness from this podcast. I just walked you through the five hiding places mortgage professionals use to unwittingly play it safe, play it small, and keep themselves from their greatness. Don't let those hiding places hold you back from your greatness because this gift of life, it's a gift. It's no dress rehearsal. It's a one-shot deal. So let's make the most of this gift of life and let's bring your gift to this world and create massive impact in the world so that you can spread your wings and soar and fulfill the highest calling on your life and to be that difference maker, to be that beacon of strength, to be light in the darkness, to touch hearts and change lives. That's what I'm talking about. Not just making do, but making freaking history. So I'm looking forward to connecting with you if indeed you're ready to book a call. If not, we'll see you on the next episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon. Peace, y'all.